Hi everybody, welcome back to the Tetrix RoboBite video series. This is Tim from Pitsco Education. Today's RoboBite, I wanna to talk to you about Sprocket and Chain. Now Sprocket and Chain are part of the motion category in the Tetrix ecosystem, and you can get them several ways. You can get the individual sprockets by themselves, and we have a 16 tooth, we have a 24 tooth, and we have a 32 tooth sprocket. And the chain comes in an overall length of about five foot. Now this is just an example, so it's not a full five foot, but those are the ways that you can get them a la carte, but they also come in a package. Now a common use for a sprocket and chain is basically to make a connection between a power source and where the eventual outcome of that. That's the general use for that. Uh, an example of that would be something like what I've got right here. This is an example of a sprocket and chain setup. Now you can see that I have my motor source here. This would be the output of the, uh, the drive. I, and I also have an idler gear. There's really not an atypical use for this, but the advantage of that, of the sprocket and chain, is the fact that they become really very customizable. I can make a custom link chain to whatever configuration that I need to, and it makes a very non-slip type of an application versus a pulley and chain. They're very similar in their uses, but the advantage of a, a chain and sprocket is you can make it very non-slip, so that's one of the advantages of using sprocket and chain besides the fact that I can configure it to my space and make it very convenient that way to have a remote power source but then my output in a location that makes best uh, is, makes best sense for my particular application. So that would be the typical thing that you would use a sprocket and chain for. Things to watch out for. Uh, alignment, like all we said in a lot of these applications, it's very important that the alignment of my sprocket and chain in order to work properly, it has to be aligned so that it doesn't jump off of my sprockets. The other thing that you wanna watch out for is tension. If I rotate this motor, you see that I can get slack in my chain. You wanna make sure that we keep the slack out of that and we have a proper tension in our motor application that way it maintains its location on the sprocket. Additional resources, remember, you can always go to the product page at the bottom of each product at pitsco.com and you can see specific things like data sheets, uh, CAD files, everything you need to know specifically about that particular product is located on in the individual product page. So like we always say, have fun, build robots, and come back and see us.